Your words were found, and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. Welcome back to Eminem. Are you ready to eat the word of God, that is? That is what we are all about here at Eminem. I want to welcome you. I'm Barbara Bindewald, and this is our 11th Eminem. I believe the 11th term, um, our third on video on the website. So welcome to you. If you are a newcomer especially, you might want to stop right now and go look up on the website the 20 minute video of the background of Eminem and the how to's and so forth. But for all of you, welcome. I have missed you. I've missed Eminem. I was thrilled to be able to have our gathering on August 18th um, in South Carolina. It was wonderful to see you in the flesh and to hug you and be hugged and just to have real people in front of me, not just this camera. So I am thinking of you all now and realizing, trying to remind myself that you are out there, that I'm not just by myself in my room in Shiba, Japan. So, welcome. Um, this time, our new theme is the serious fight for joy. And I hope that you will learn much, be changed much by the Holy Spirit as you feed on His Word, that we might know His joy, joy in God, more. Um, the what is Eminem, how to Eminem, as I said, please go to the 20 minute video or look around on the website and you'll find out the answers to those questions. Where and when is Eminem? This part right here is just one hour and it is sort of our pep rally. It's our accountability time where we say our verses together, where we sing together, even if it's in cyberspace. Um, and I share a little bit. Uh, about what I thought of, how the Lord led me as I meditated on the verse for that week. But the real M&M is between you and the Lord and His Word. It is whenever you meet with the Lord, with His Word, and chew on it in His presence and ask Him to teach you and change you and give you thoughts about this verse. That's the real M&M. But this time can be whenever you want it, because it's on in cyberspace, online, you can go to it whenever you want. We have ladies who are videoing, I mean, who are Eminem'ing in Japan and Romania and so forth and so on, all these different countries that you can see on the website. And we're in different time zones. So that's one thing I have loved about cyberspace. We can do this. It doesn't matter. You can do it whenever is good for you. And I do suggest, please, do it with a friend, a family member. We have one um, lady who M&M's who is a missionary up in Tohoku, J Japan, the area that was hit by the earthquake and tsunami. And her daughter, who grew up in Japan but is now married and a mom and living in the States, does M&M with her. So across the two sides of the world, they are M&M'ing. So find a friend, find a family member. But do it together, even if you don't have to get together and watch the video together, but memorize, meditate on the verses together and have that extra accountability. Now, why do we m and That also is spelled out in the, on the website, but just for all of us, even if this is your 11th time m and if you're like me, you need to be reminded why we do this, and it is a discipline why we spend the time and effort to do this. Two reasons I thought of as I was preparing. One day I read the following devotional by C. H. Charles H. Spurgeon. It was on, I will meditate on your precepts, on Psalm, which is Psalm 119, verse 15. We would be better Christians if we were alone more often, waiting on God and gathering through meditation on his word, spiritual strength for service in his kingdom. We ought to ponder 
the things of God, because that is how we get the real nutriment out of them. And he goes on to say, the word of God is like grapes that need to be crushed, need to be squeezed to get the nutriment out of them. And then he goes on to say, why is it that some Christians, although they hear many sermons, make only slow advances in the Christian life because they neglect their closets and do not thoughtfully meditate on God's word. They love the wheat, but do not grind it. They want the corn, but they will not go out to the fields to gather it. The fruit hangs on the tree, but they will not pluck it. The water flows at their feet, but they will not stoop to drink it. Deliver us, O Lord, from such folly. And may this be our resolve this morning. I will meditate on your precepts. So, I gave you the full quote there, and the, um, or part of that quote on a card. We have many index cards that we use, um, and many were included with the email that you got. Now, one more reason. I thought of the quote by Andre Sue Peterson. She remarried after her husband died several years ago. Um, it's a favorite of m and for many years. And when she's talking about why it's important to pray out loud, now she's not talking about meditating and memorizing scripture, but this quote came to mind as I was thinking, why do I m and m She said, prayer that percolates up to the lips, packs a force that stands a fighting chance against the screaming banshees of desire and mutiny. <laughs> Can you relate to that? I have screaming banshees. Do you have screaming banshees? Now, m and getting God's word in my heart by meditating on it, memorizing it, it also packs a force that stands a fighting chance against the screaming banshees of desire and mutiny in my head and in the world out there. And secondly, she says, I pray out loud because the battle in me is fierce, and so my prayer must be fierce. I am an M because I want to walk with Christ and dwell in Him and glorify Him with my life. And that only comes by fighting. That battle in me, in the world, is fierce. So my getting the word dwelling in me richly must be fierce, must be intentional. That's why I am an M. So, enough of the what and the where and the when and the how and the why. Let's not neglect our closets. Are you ready? Let's shut the door. Pray with me. Lord, I have shut the door. Speak now the word which in the din and throng could not be heard. Hushed now my inner heart. Whisper thy will while I have come apart, while all is still. Lord, I have shut the door. Here do I bow. Speak, for my soul a tent turns to thee now. Rebuke thou what is vain. Counsel my soul. Thy holy will reveal, my will control. In this blessed quietness, clamorings cease. Here in thy presence dwells infinite peace. Yonder the strife and cry, yonder the sin. Lord, I have shut the door. Thou art within. Lord, I have shut the door. Strengthen my heart. Yonder awaits the task I share a part. Only through grace bestowed may I be true. Here, while alone with thee, my strength renew. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Now, we're going to sing. Singing is very, very important in our fight for joy. And we have a new song. Actually, we're going to do two songs this time but we'll introduce the other one later in um, future weeks. 
but I chose Children of the Living God for several reasons. It is delightful to sing, it is upbeat, it is fun, it is joyful, but it is also serious. In it is the gospel. In it it talks about the wonder. It talks about being children and that's what we are called to do. We are not to lose the wonder. And so I hope you enjoy memorizing this song and we, we will sing it together with the Francis family, the Eminem singers, um, Megan and Matt and Jeff. Thank you so much for helping us sing. Let's sing. song I love it I hope you will too sing it in the car sing it when you're walking sing it in the grocery store sing it at night when you're in bed just sing it let's pray father thank you for gathering us together Lord we look to you to be our teacher please speak through your word to our hearts and change us because we met together in Jesus name we pray amen all right the next part of our time together of Eminem is to recite. Now since this is the first week we don't have much to recite so you get off easy this week but um, and if you'll watch the video on the how to's you'll see it is quite alright to read your verses. It's meditate first, first priority and memorize is second priority. So don't worry about it if you want to read your cards you read them boldly as I always say. Okay? So in this serious fight for joy, our first verse is Psalm 16, 11. Okay, read it with me. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. One more time. Psalm 16, 11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures 
forevermore. So this week coming up, I hope that you will enjoy chewing on that verse. Um, there's two cards that we gave you um, in the email are tips for memorizing, tips for meditating. You might want to look at that. But chew on these words over and over again. Do it daily for a few minutes, for longer, however you choose to do it. Now is our meditation time where I share about the verse. And again, this week, because it's the first time, it's a little bit different. I'm going to talk about the theme and mostly about our new theme. So, here we go. The serious fight for joy. Let's look at those three main words. Serious, fight, and joy. First of all, joy. Now, before I spend the term on um, fighting for joy, looking for joy, I want to make sure it's biblical. Or is this just some, you know, um, is it sounds like it might be prosperity gospel preachers? You know, God wants me to be happy and comfortable and healthy and rich and joyful. Well, let's see if it is biblical. Galatians 4.15, what has happened to all your joy? Philippians 1.25, Paul says, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. 2 Corinthians 1.24, we work with you for your joy. 2 Corinthians 8.2, who said of the Christians in the Macedonian church, For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. Second Thessalonians 5 says, Be joyful always. Philippians 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, Rejoice! James 1, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds. And in Nehemiah 8, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And Jesus' words to us from John 15, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Are you convinced, as I am, that this is a biblical fight? That God wants us to know the joy that Christ died to give us? Now, the next word, fight. Now, joy, I like. Fight, I don't. I don't like wars. My husband loves war movies and war airplanes and all that stuff. I don't like to fight. I don't like to, to watch the war movies. I don't like this idea of fighting. It's too violent. And there's enough of it in the world today. But, hear me out. I know you know this already, but let's remind ourselves, ladies. We may not like it. We may not like it. But we are in a war. And we are fools if we act like we are not soldiers. If we do not realize we are soldiers, even though we might, you might be a missionary in, the, um, in a dark place somewhere in the world serving the Lord, or you may be a middle-aged housewife, mother, grandmother, living in the suburbs of small town USA. But if you belong to Christ, you are in a war, and we must remember that and act upon it. This is a fight, this fight for joy. It is a fight to find joy in God. It is a fight to trust Him and believe that He is good and He is sovereign all the time. It is a fight to be content in God 
not in our circumstances. It is a fight to not worry and fret and complain and whine. It is a fight to praise Him instead. It is a fight to get up again when we fall. And it is a fight to believe His Word. So, serious. You can tell it's serious. We are not playing church, my sisters. This is very serious to fight for joy. If you are in Christ, we have a great responsibility and a privilege to glorify God with our lives. And this is serious to fight for joy because, as John Piper has said many times, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. Can you hear the thunder? It's raining here. Now, where can I find joy? Where is it? That's our verse for today. Psalm 1611. Say it with me again. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Sorry, no there. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Anne Voskamp, right, um, author of 1000 Gifts, says, The secret to joy is to keep seeking God where we doubt He is. And she says also, If there are wolves in the woods, expect to see wolves. <laughs> you think, and what does that have to do with fighting for joy, Barb? Let me finish it. If there are wolves in the woods, expect to see wolves. And if there is God in this place, expect to see God. So, joy is found in the presence of the Lord. It is found in every situation, in every trial, in every heartache, but not in the situation, in the trial, or in the heartache itself. It is found in the presence of Jesus in those situations, and those trials, and those heartaches, because Jesus is there. Now, one final thing that meant a lot to me that I read what um, John Piper said. As we start fighting for joy and seeking joy, we cannot demand it. Joy is a gift. No matter what we talk about the next several weeks, don't ever forget that joy is a gift. You cannot demand it. Piper says, When all is said and done, only God can create joy in God. Our fight for joy does not coerce God to give the gift of joy, but puts us in the path where He has ordained the blessings to come. So our fight puts us in the path where he has ordained blessings to come. But we cannot demand joy from the Almighty. We are like farmers. They plow the field and plant the seed and cut away weeds and scare away crows, but they do not make the crop grow. God does. He sends rain and sunshine and brings to maturity that hidden life of the seed. We have our part, but it is not coercive or controlling. And there will be times when the crops fail. Even then, God has ways of feeding the farmer and bringing him through a lean season. We cannot make him come. But we are to wait and hope and trust that he will come. And he does. Hear that again. We cannot make him come. But we are to wait and hope and trust 
that he will come. And he does. In obedience to God's word, we should fight to walk in the paths where he has promised his blessings. But when and how they come is God's to decide, not ours. If they delay, we trust the wisdom of our Father's timing and we wait. In this way, joy remains a gift while we work patiently in the field of obedience and fight against the weeds and the crows and the rodents. Here is where joy will come. Here is where Christ will reveal himself. But that revelation and joy will come when and how Christ chooses. It is a gift. Now this set of verses that we're going to chew on to eat, they will help us do our part in our fight for joy. To plow the field, plant the seed, cut away weeds, and scare away crows, as John Piper said. But we cannot demand joy and we cannot manufacture it for ourselves. But it will bring great joy to our Father when we ask Him for joy in Him. Therefore, our benediction verse, that's the verse that we say at the end of each lesson that we also include in our memory verses. I chose for the benediction verse, Romans 15, 13. Because of this quote by John Piper, to be reminded that it is a gift and we come to God of the whole universe, sovereign God, we come to him and we ask for the gift of joy. Romans 15, 13, read it with me. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is a depending on him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. As one who has struggled with depression for many years, I struggle to be hopeful. I fight the fight against despair. This is a good fight, a fight for joy. It is biblical and it pleases God. So please join me in this fight to know the joy that Christ died to give us. So now your M&M begins. Eat well, eat what is good for you, and chew your food well. You have two verses to chew on this week. The Psalm 1611 and the benediction verse, Romans 15, 13. And, children of the living God, don't forget to sing our song. Thank you for being here with me. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.